Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to my Bow, Sword, and Board build for the Stamina Templar. This is a build that I actually modeled after Link from Legend of Zelda. I really wanted to put together a build that did Link some justice, so I thought, okay, we've got to be Bow, Sword, and Board, of course, those are Link's weapons of choice, and of course, I think Templar is the best fit because, well, Templar is a holy knight, and Link is all about fighting for justice. So we, of course, have not only modeled the build after Link, but I've put the kit, everything, to kind of fight in the same style that Link does, so I really wanted to go for a theme build here. I really hope that you guys like this build. It's got some really interesting gameplay. It's very trap-oriented. You can do a lot of interesting control on the battlefield with it, and it's got a really fun offensive kit modeled after, of course, that legendary hero Link. This build is fantastic because it is a mix of of bulk, speed, power, and regen. It is a very well-rounded build, and I feel like it excels in all kinds of different fights in PvP, but I think it's best in small group scenario. Having a couple friends with you, it will really excel as a build. So if you guys like this video at any point, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's jump into it. So, to begin, we are a Wood Elf on the Templar, and uh, well, Link is closest to Wood Elf. Honestly, I don't know what other race you could pick that makes sense for Link outside of Wood Elf. High Elf is kind of close, but Link is very short. So I gotta say, he's a Wood Elf for sure. Um, and then on top of that, Wood Elf actually fits perfectly with this build. Wood Elf is the BIS race for this spec um, and just has great synergy with the sets and gives us the stam sustain we need. You can definitely go for other stamina based races like Orc or even Red Guard on this build. But I do think Wood Elf is going to be the best bet for this guy. Uh, so let's take a look at that stat page. Our max health is coming in at just short of 24k. We've got 10k Magicka and 29k Stamina. So pretty decent max stat. We are in medium armor, so 24k HP is pretty sweet. We've got a lot of physical bulk and magical bulk on this build. So our hit point value is actually super awesome. We don't need to push it crazy high. 29k Stamina. I like playing sword and board with 30k plus stamina. 29k is a little bit on the low end for myself. However, this build still functioned really well. It just means that if you're going to play this build in no CP, you'll have to make quite a few changes to it to give yourself the stam you need. And that's going to be changes in your glyphs and uh, in your food. Now, taking a look at the regens on this build, we're going to buff up with the potion so you guys can see. And we're going to put... Our, our rune down as well. We've got just about 900 Magicka recovery, just short of 1900 health recovery, and 1850 stamina recovery. So really sweet recovery on this build, I think. We've got all the mag recovery we need. We're only using purge as our Magicka skill, so this is going to cover our purges. The health recovery, super fantastic on this build. Just about 1,900 health recovery in medium armor. To go along with our really high bulk, this is a really great setup to just be able to take damage and easily heal it away. And then, of course, the 1,800 stamina recovery plus the almost 500 we get from our rune. So we've got around 2,300 stam recovery on this build. So awesome sustain for this spec. Let's take a look at that weapon damage now. We are going to roll dodge because we do have the Senshe set on Fully buffed, we are at 3,780 weapon damage. And uh, that's pretty sweet on this build, I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, when we get our infused bow enchant, it'll give us another 600 or so weapon damage. So fully buffed on this spec, we are looking at just shy of 4,400 weapon damage to go with our 29k stam on this build. So actually a pretty sweet amount of weapon damage on this spec, I'm not going to lie. For sword and board, that's a pretty decent weapon damage to pair it with our max stam and then our higher crit rate. Really great. Now I know it's not as high as some of the other DPS builds you guys have seen me play in the past, but that is of course because this build is more of a mixed build between speed, bulk, regen, and uh, power. And then, of course, our weapon crit when we buff up on the sword and board bar is at 47% and then 52% on the bow bar. So a really nice amount of weapon crit on this build as well. We're going to be landing lots of crits, and uh, yeah, that's going to be great for the build. Taking a look at our resists, oh my lord, and this is where this medium armor build really takes off. 38k spell, 35k physical resist on 2,000, almost 2,300 crit resist. 
Massive resists on this build. We are over hard cap for resists, so our opponent has to be running penetration in order to uh, get past our resistance on this build. We are, of course, a Templar, so we can easily purge away negative effects. That's going to help keep our resistances high as well, because we can purge those debuffs. And, of course, the big reason we've stacked so much resist is because our health recovery is tied to our resistance value via the Alessian set that we're wearing. So, taking a look at our Mundus that we're running, we've got the Steed Mundus. Now, the reason I went with the Steed is because it provides, of course, that health recovery, which is so valuable in PvP. And then the 10% movement speed, paired with the 10% we get from Wood Elf, and then uh, Major Expedition, and we are almost at speed cap in Sprint. We're at 90% movement speed while in Sprint on this build. So, not only do we get that great mixed bulk, but we get to maintain a lot of speed on this build, and that's really, I think, important for this spec. And then the food we're using is the Orzorga Smoked Bear Haunch. Now, this food here, guys, is definitely the way to go for this build. If you're going to play in no CP, you want to switch out Orzorgas for the Dubious Cameron Throne or uh, the Arteum Takeaway Broth, which is the better version of that. And that's just going to help make up for the lack of max stam you'll have in the uh, no CP campaigns. And then, of course, you'll just be changing some of your weapon damage glyphs to Magikar Recovery to help make up for the fact that you're giving up a little bit of mag sustain. And then for the potion that we're using on this build, we have got the Essence of Weapon Power. Very important for a Bow Sword and Board Templar to run this potion because it gives us the Major Brutality and the Major Savagery buffs, which we are missing uh, via our kit. So we're going to get the buffs from here, and that's really important. And then, of course, we get the Stamina Recovery to give us Major Endurance. A little bit of additional Stamina Recovery for 47 seconds, so really nice as well. All right, so let's take a look at the gear that we're using to put this bad boy together. So the first set that we have is actually Slime Craw. This is going to give us some Weapon Crit and Minor Berserk for a Templar and a Dragon Knight and a Sorcerer, which don't come by Minor Berserk by themselves. Slime Craw is one of the best, if not the best, increase for your burst damage and damage all around that you can run, especially now that crits are so viable in PvP. Slime Craw is an absolutely fantastic set, and the extra crit chance will be great for your healing too. So that's why we've gone with Slime Craw, just to give us a bit of damage coming from this set. The next set that we're wearing is the Senche set. And I tried out a few sets for this build, but I ended up coming to the Senche set because it pairs so well with the Wood Elf. And we are bow, sword, and board, so we do a ton of dodge rolling and a ton of blocking on this build. So having a set that gives us a huge weapon damage and weapon crit buff on the roll is a really big deal for this spec. It synergizes really well because we are going to be rolling a lot in our medium armor. And then finally, guys, the last set that we have is the Alessian set. Now, I had done a heavy armor build using this set, but I did really want to do a medium armor build showing off this set as well because it is such a good set regardless of what armor weight you choose to wear as long as you add a little bit of bulk to your build. So when we buff up, we can see from our Alessian set, it is giving us 733 health recovery on the five piece. Now, that is really high. There are no other five piece sets in the game that give you 700 plus stat just for nothing. That is a massive amount of stat to have up at all times, and of course, this is kind of based on our physical spell resist. So yet again, this set pairs really well with Templar because of our Purge. If we get debuffed, our health recovery will go down, but our Purge is such a strong counter because it will remove the debuff and our health recovery will go back up. So really, really great set for the Templar especially, I think. And uh, we have got Alessian on both swaps here, so there are no on swap for this build, and I would not really recommend that you run on swap for this build. If you really want to, you could run Senche on swap with a weapon damage or an agility front piece, but you only get a tiny little bit more stat out of that, and you'll miss quite a few of your Senche buffs if you're running it on swap. So that's why I've run no sets on swap for this build, and just have the full sets up all the time. So taking a look at the enchants and the traits on our weapons, starting on our bow, we have got the infused bow with the weapon spell damage enchant, Absolutely fantastic. This is going to be up most of the time as long as we're actively using our bow in combat. So we get a huge amount of weapon damage boost from uh, having this infused bow. And then on our front bar, we of course have the Nernhone Sword. Nernhone on Sword and Board is so important, I think, because Nernhone is going to be way better of a damage increaser and a healing increaser than pretty much any trait you can go for here. And that's because Nernhone, you get that full 15% value. You go for Sharpened or anything, and you get only half the amount of value that you would normally. So definitely Nernhone on the main weapon. Now, notice that I do have a dagger here. It doesn't matter what weapon you have here on Sword and Board, whether you have a dagger, mace, axe, or sword. They all function the same 
It's only dual wield where you start to get different functions out of your one hand weapons. So it doesn't really matter which one you get here. And then finally for the shield, we have got the Alessian shield. The sturdy trait for that reduced cost of block. Very important to have that on our sword and board. And then max stam on this bar as well because our sword and board bar is our damage bar too. So just bulking up the damage by giving us more stam here. And then for the poisons we're using, we are using the damage health poison. And this is actually a huge whammy for sword and board, I think. The damage health poison is really easy to proc with sword and board because you'll be doing a lot of light attack, skill of choice, bash cancel. And all of those attacks have a 20% chance in order to proc the poison. So you pretty much have a 60% chance on one animation cancel combo to proc this damage health poison. So it'll deal a great amount of damage on this build. And then for the jewelry, guys, we have got full protective trait with weapon damage and chance and the protective trait of course is important because it will give us bonus health recovery just stacking with that alessian set and then the weapon damage is great because that's going to help supplement uh the damage on this build this is where a bulk of our weapon damage is going to come from from our jewelry and chance here and then for the gear guys we have got four impenetrable and three well fitted. You can use a 4 3 mix of impen and well fitted, whichever one you feel like you want more of. I did four impen for the build video, but on the live server, I actually ran five well fitted and two garbage traits. So I have no impen for the footage on this build uh, coming from my gear. So yeah, I was running at a little bit of a disadvantage. So I think that running the impen on this build would make it a lot stronger than what I experienced on the live server. It was still a really good build, but having the impen on it, I think would have pushed it to that next level as well. And then for the enchants on the gear, we are full maximum stamina enchants. Don't worry about HP. Don't worry about Magicka. We don't need a huge HP or Magicka pool on this build. 24k is plenty of HP. Our mag at 10k is fine. We're only using purge. So just stack the max stam for that increased damage and healing. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the skills we're using on this build. And these skills are, of course, reflecting the fact that I wanted to do a Link-style build for this game. So the first skill we have is Ransack. And I just want to buff up real quick for Ransack so you guys can see what the buffed tooltip on this ability is. We're coming in at 8,500 nearly physical damage when we buff up with Ransack. So a pretty decent tooltip for it. That is going to be our spammable of choice. Not only is it a great spammable, but it afflicts major fractures to reduce our opponent's physical resist as well and we gain minor resolve increasing our physical resistance too so a little bit more health recovery and armor coming out of this ability when we use it as well really great skill for this build the next ability we have is Shielded Assault. This is the primary gap closer for the build. It does deal a pretty decent amount of damage on gap close, and we get a damage shield when we use it, but it's pretty much here just to keep us mobile and allow us to close a gap when we need it. Of course, it is a really good stun too. This is going to be one of your stuns on this build. This is your actual stun, and then we have the Leash, which is more of a interrupt stun. It still stuns your opponent, but just in a little bit of a different way. But this is kind of your spammable stun for this spec. The next skill that we have is Silver Leash. And this, of course, was picked to kind of mimic Link's grappling hook. And it works so well. We've got some really cool trap gameplay on this build. And it reflects the fact that we've picked these kind of cool skills set up. Our Silver Leash has a pretty decent tooltip as well. When we buff it up, we've got the same tooltip as our Ransack. So it can deal a lot of damage with this ability as well. And uh, that pull, man, that pull is so good. And it synergizes so well with our Lightweight Beast Trap. Now, Lightweight Beast Trap is a trap that you're gonna throw on the ground, and the way that I use this skill on this build is we throw the trap down, and then we're gonna leash people into it. Now, the reason that I chose Lightweight Beast Trap over the other morph that rearms itself is because the Lightweight Trap actually deals more damage, even though it only arms once, and I thought the extra damage would be better because PvP is very burst-oriented, so you wanna have the highest amount of damage as possible. Not to mention we can throw the trap so we don't need to throw it at our feet, so we can preemptively place the trap in a spot where we know we're going to be able to get a good grapple or we know that someone will run over it so there we go the lightweight beast trap of course is going to deal a flat amount of damage when it arms and then it will deal the 10k dot over six seconds so a really nice dot it immobilizes our foe and grants us minor force really nice skill and we will get a lot of cool usage out of it on this build synergizing so well with the grappling hook now i actually picked the lightweight beast trap because i wanted to model after kind of link's bomb but we didn't have a fantastic option for the bomb the only skill that we could have used is the mage's guild skill that tosses them in the air so in the interest of this of this build kind of working better i thought the trap was a uh, okay replacement sorry link if you don't get your bomb on my kit here 
I apologize. And then finally, guys, our last uh, normal ability we have is Defensive Stance. And this is a fantastic ability, in particular for the Stamina Templar. We get to reflect an incoming spell projectile. When we reflect a projectile, it will also stun the opponent that it hits. This is such a great skill because it heavily shuts down any ranged Magicka build. And uh, you can really use it well to not only kite them, but stun them. And use it against a group of players to really even the odds. Because, uh, yeah... This Reflect is really strong. The fact that it stuns is a huge deal. On top of it, it lasts for 30 seconds. So you can use this Reflect at the beginning of a fight, and if a mag player comes in from the side and hits you, they'll just take their own stun. So really, really nice ability for this build. And I really like it, especially for fighting things like Sorcerer on the Stamina Templar. And of course, we pick Defensive Stance because Link can reflect stuff with his shield. We had to have a Reflect to make this a Link build. And then finally, guys, for our ultimate, we have got Empowering Sweep. And I actually really like this ultimate for the build. It is great not only for the burst that it provides. It deals quite a bit of damage when we buff it up here. You can see our Adric Spear tooltip gets pretty decent at almost, yeah, 10.5k. Really nice tooltip. And then we deal that uh, bonus splash every two seconds for six seconds as well. The splash is really nice because it's actually a good AoE stealth detect as well. So you can pull people out of stealth with it. But it deals a lot of damage, and all of this can proc Burning Light. So this has the potential to hit people really hard, even with the uh, extra splash afterwards. Now, the big thing from this skill is that major protection for 6 seconds, giving us a 30% reduction in damage that we take. And this is increased by 1 second for each enemy we hit. Really fantastic. This is a very cheap ultimate. To give 6 seconds of major protection is a huge deal, because it allows us to have some really serious bulk on our sword and board bar and we can just actively fight for a long time i mean this is a great alt and you guys will see in the footage i use it offensively and defensively on this build because it's such a great mixed alt and then of course the uh kind of link style thing well in the new game link uses spears so this is a spear ultimate so there you go this definitely fits now taking a look at our bow bar guys our back bar the first ability we have is poison injection and this is just Link's Arrows of Justice. We all know Link's got to shoot those arrows. Um, kind of more mimicking the fire arrow that Link gets because it's a damage over time shot. However, there is no fire arrow for stamina builds, so we definitely just pick Poison Injection. Really nice for this build because we get that bonus damage over time as their health begins to drop. So this is kind of our execute on this build, paired with, of course, Power of the Light for that big explosion. These two abilities are going to be our set distance dots. Power of the Light, of course, is going to deal a little bit of upfront damage and it's undodgeable with that little bit of upfront damage and the explosion. I think that's really worth mentioning because a lot of people dodge around a lot, so you can predictably land a Power of the Light on a rolling target, wait when they're done rolling, and then follow it with a Poison Injection. Now this will also apply Minor Fracture and Minor Breach to the target. Really nice, just to give them more conditions to have to deal with as well, and allowing us to deal a little bit more damage. And of course, the fact that we have both Major and Minor Penetration for our physical attacks is a huge deal for this build. It means that we're going to have quite a bit of armor pierce. Um, major and minor protection plus the wood elf is going to be around 8,000 penetration. And then our champion points is going to bring us to 12k physical penetration on this build. So we actually have a lot of pen and it works really well. It's going to allow us to do some serious damage with our sword and board bar. And then finally, guys, for our heal, we have got Resolving Vigor. This is the only heal we use on this build. I'm just going to buff up real fast so you guys can see the uh, tooltip here. Um, and I'm going to take a look at it on our Sword and Board bar because the amount that Vigor heals you is kind of based on what bar you're on. So we've got just shy of a 14k Vigor. Of course, if we roll dodge as well, we'll go up to around 15k on the Vigor. So a pretty decent Vigor tooltip. It's not the highest, but paired with our almost 2k health recovery... We have a lot of healing power on this build, and we only need Vigor in order to stay alive. We don't need more healing than this. Don't be, uh, don't be feeling like you need to slot Draining Shot or something. Vigor by itself is more than enough healing to go with your health recovery. And then, of course, Vigor is nice because we can also heal our allies with it, too. Now, the next skill that we have is Extended Ritual. Extended Ritual is fantastic for the Templar. It pairs so well with this build, like I said, because we're running the Alessian set. The Alessian set gives us health recovery based on our armor value. Extended Ritual is going to make sure that we keep our armor value high by removing debuffs, giving us that higher health recovery as well. So really great, uh, not only for the Templar, but for this build especially. 
And then finally, guys, we have got Restoring Focus. This is going to be our major physical and spell resistance buffs, as well as 240 stamina every one second, so the equivalent of 480 stamina recovery. And then while we're standing in the rune, we actually get a bonus to the amount of physical and spell resist granted by 50%. So tanking in our rune with major protection, we are actually very, very bulky on this build. Now, something that I did want to mention about my back bar here is that I have Vigor on the back bar and not on the front bar. Now, this is just out of preference to put as much damage as possible on my front bar because I personally am fast when I weapon swap. I don't have an issue doing this. If you guys are struggling with the faster swaps on this build, I would recommend that you take off the beast trap, put it on your back bar because it is a ranged attack, so it's okay to put it there, and then put vigor on your front bar so you can hold block and spam vigor. It's just going to help if you're trying to learn this build or uh, if you're not as fast with your swaps. It'll help you make sure that you have your heals on your sword and board bar which is likely where you'll be doing a lot of blocking anyway. Um, but the reason I did this, of course, is to stack more weapon damage on the front bar. This is purely up to the user if you want to slot Vigor on the uh, front bar or not. And then finally, guys, for our ultimate on this build, we have got the Ballista. And the Ballista is such a strong ultimate. We set it down. It's going to deal 51k physical damage over 5.2 seconds. And of course, we're free to do whatever else we want while the Ballista is shooting at our target. So we can Ballista, stun them, and give them some pokes. Really fantastic ability for this build. Um, and this is just kind of our huge burst ultimate when we're fighting a target that we maybe don't have the firepower to take down This is going to give us that extra bit of pepper so we can take down the really tanky targets All right guys, so let's take a look at the champion points So starting off in the tower tree We've got 31 warlord 9 in sprinter and 19 in bashing focus We focused on warlord of course because break free is very important um, Sprinter we didn't put too many points because I did want to focus more on bashing focus We are running both sword and board sword and board bash is quite strong it deals quite a lot of damage and it's very cheap so we want to make sure to weave our bashes in to get extra burst and that is why we've got the bashing focus here taking a look at the lover tree we've got 56 healthy 56 moon calf and 11 arcanist just to reflect what our sustains are already focus of course healthy moon calf because those are our primary sustains the important passive we get here is wind running for that 2% bonus movement speed and the 10% health and magicka recovery while sprinting while sprinting we can actually push over 2k health recovery which is pretty cool and then finally guys in the shadow tree we've got tw uh, 44 tumbling and 44 shadow ward nice even split here we got a roll dodge and we got to block a lot both sword and board medium armor you always want to have an even split between these two now taking a look at our blue tree we go straight to the atronach we've got 81 mastered arms and 39 in physical weapon expert uh, this is of course just a pretty basic atronach tree Increasing our direct damage is a lot of our attacks on this build, and then Physical Weapon Expert is going to affect both our Sword and Board and Bow, Light, and Heavies. The important passives we get are Tactician, Butcher, and Riposte as well. Tactician so good because we roll dodge to set an opponent off balance. Butcher to increase the damage we deal with Light and Heavies against an opponent under 25% uh, health. This isn't a massive passive, but the fact that we don't have a spammable execute, this is just going to help us bring down targets when they're in execute range. And then, of course, Riposte. The reason I mention this passive is because we are running a Sword and Board, and we're going to be blocking a lot, so we should get quite a few Riposte procs off of a block on our opponents. So really nice uh, bonus damage to get out of that as well. And then taking a look at the Ritual Tree, we got 56 Mighty, 43 Piercing, 51 Precise Strikes. Focus, of course, on Mighty to increase all of our bulk outgoing damage. Piercing was a little bit of an afterthought for this build because we already have such a high penetration rate. So with the Piercing here, we're just shy of 12k physical penetration. And then 51 Precise Strikes for that crit damage and crit healing bonus. Really nice as well for this spec. And uh, the important passives we get are Perfect Strike for that 9% weapon crit, Exploiter for a 10% bonus versus off-balance enemies, pairing really well with our Tactician, and finally Last Stand is a really nice passive too, Major Heroism when we drop below 20%. Now on this build, we're not using a Burst Heal, we use a lot of heals over time, so you should be doing your best not to fall below 20%, but if you do, it's always nice to get that extra ultimate gain. And then in the Steed Tree, guys, we have absolutely stacked this tree. 56 Ironclad, 50 Resistant, 50 Spell Shield, and 50 Medium Armor Focus. 
Ironclad, of course, is great. Reduce the damage we take from direct attacks. A lot of burst attacks are direct damage, so Ironclad's a great counter to that. Resistant, also really awesome, giving us that bonus to our crit resist. Very important for PvP. And then finally, the 50 split in uh, medium armor and spell shield. Simply because the Alessian set will increase our health recovery based on our armor. So if we dump a lot of points in here, we can get a lot of health recovery on this build from these two, uh, these two stars here. And then, of course, a fun little passive is also Phase. Increase our physical and spell resist by 660 when we dodge roll. Really awesome because we are playing the block and dodge roll build. So a huge amount of focus on our uh, on our defensive bulk pretty much from this deed tree here. Coming over to the lady tree, very different story. We got 32 elemental and 32 hardy. Nothing in thick skin. Elemental hardy, of course, picked to give us a nice mix between uh, reducing incoming physical and magical damage. Nothing in thick skin because we are a Templar and we have purge. So important that we make sure to utilize our purge on this build to keep our armor values up and remove those damage over time effects. And then finally in the Lord Tree, we've got absolutely nothing. And that is the build, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into that PvP commentary. We're going to start off with an anti-gank. There we see a lot of arrows coming out, of, coming out of stealth there. I managed to get off my horse, make the roll, go for two more rolls up the hill, get a bit of height and terrain here, and now we're just going to open, get the poison injection on this guy. There's the power of the light, and we hit him with the silver leash. Now, a big thing I want to say about the leash is that it is not really a stun, but it is a stun at the same time because there's about a one-second period where they can't do anything, and there you saw we pulled him with the leash and hit him with a huge combo, and he was unable to defend against it. And we quickly bring down that Nightblade. We turn and burn on these guys here. The other Nightblade quickly runs out of stealth. We dot this guy up, go for a few pokes, and down he goes. And the other Nightblades just end up hiding. So there you go. We're going to move on to another fight here. In this fight, we've got a lot of AD just kind of rushing onto this resource here. We get a good pull on this guy here. Put nice damage into him with the poke. There's the poison injection rolling through the group there, trying to sprint away. Really nice combo to bring him down. And there we see the enemy actually getting the silver leash on me. And I decide, okay, we're going to go for a direction change to get out of this. Quickly purge and heal as we come up the thing here. Lots of sprinting. Gap close into this warden to break that distance there and then we're going to sprint back towards this side here now that we've broken a little bit more distance from these guys and uh, just head down this corridor as the yellow follow us and here you see the yellow are coming down and we're just poison injection power of the lighting as they head down here just trying to put a bit of damage into the early targets take a really funky streak stun there i take the stun even though he doesn't teleport past me but we're just going to kite right past these guys again and uh, the whole point of doing something like this is just to encourage the group to split up the more that we do this the less attention we have because they're just going to be chasing us in circles and there you see look at this tail oh my god at least eight ad players on our tail here and we just cut through this uh, little passageway again and they'll take a nasty in cap from that nightblade he does step on our trap which is really nice we set the trap down hoping to get some damage get a really nice protect from the end or from the friendly player there we did just use our ultimate as well so we did have major protection up already but this tether is just going to ensure that we have a little bit more sustain go for a spin around the side there and kite up the uh up the uh, little bit of wooden rampart here really nice kite again and then i'm going to drop down to the bottom of the rampart because we can't take rage damage and only a single nightblade follows me down here and uh we actually fight this nightblade for a little bit here and he is uh running a pretty bulky build i'm pretty sure he's a heavy armor nightblade he's not doing a lot of rolling not doing a ton of cloaking but he's got a lot of bulk and he's running the troll king set so it's a great test for our build to just fight this guy toe to toe and see how we can do damage and how we can take damage on this spec and as you guys can see he's having a lot of trouble pushing us past 50 percent hit points here we just make sure to keep our vigor up and keep the pressure on him and we're able to easily out heal even his in cap damage um he however is very tanky too and i'm having a lot of trouble landing that nice clean combo in this tight spot there so he kites out behind the tree here that's great i throw a trap down hoping to try to lure him into it um, but to, I actually put it behind the tree there, so not the best trap placement. Put a new trap down there, go for the uh, grapple to try to get him with the trap, and I think we do hit him with the trap, but he doesn't take the immobilize because he's got a... Uh 
He's got an immobilize immunity and a snare immunity up. So we're just going to continue to put pressure into this very, very tanky Nightblade here. And uh, he's just honestly not hitting us super hard. You get to see the bulk of this build. He just hit us with a full combo from stealth there. And uh, we just go around the corner, purge into vigor, and we easily deal with that. Roll his next attack. And I decide, okay, we're going to put some pressure on this Sork here because he's just fighting this other tanky EP player here as another EP comes in. Click, quickly clean this Sork up and the Nightblade disengages. So I just wanted to highlight that clip for the mix of movement, damage, and bulk and sustain that this build has. Really nice mixed clip there. So this next fight here, we're actually doing a little bit of a small group fight. There's another EP on the flag. As this yellow group comes rolling around the corner with all their abilities down, we go for a double kite around the corner. I fake going one way and then go back the other. The entire group falls for it, so we manage to easily peel inside the keep there as they all rush on the flag. And here we see all the yellow on the flag. I see the low HP player pull him in with the leash, grappling him into me, finishing him off with the pokes there really nice grapple to bring that guy down this player here we put a lot of damage with the pottle and uh sitting in the enemy negates we just pump him with a few uh a few sword attacks to bring him down and now we just uh are going to continue to fight these guys take a stun from this nightblade dot him up really nice set my trap down i want to get the pull on him there but he enters cloak just as we're about to pull him so i pull another player onto my trap really loving that combo with the beast trap and the leash oh my gosh we can really make use of that trap as a few more yellow come in here, so I just kite back inside the tower really quick, purge away, we're still full health because, of course, we've got quite a bit of bulk on this build, unless someone focuses us hard, we're not going to take a lot of damage, really nice pull there on the low health player, pulling him into our sword, and poking him down to finish him off, and now we're just going to reset our vigor, purge off the negative effects, and chase this Sork up the side here, put nice damage into him, the other EP player here has actually done a lot of damage too, he's taken down a few yellow, this Sork decides to retreat, and the last yellow decides to retreat as well as another EP player comes in. All right, so moving on to our next clip here, we're just going to be showing off a little bit of the leash trolling. There we see a player falls off his horse but continues to try to sprint away. He's out, almost out of range. We just leash him in and finish him off there. This guy's coming off his horse. We dot him up with the injection and, uh, and the power of the light. Leash him into us there and then just poke him with the sword to bring him down yet again, showing off that trap gameplay. Really, really nice. Just controlling the single yellow players here. I really enjoy this build because when you're fighting in especially smaller scale, you can really control single players. So uh, this Templar ends up coming back and he's got all his buffs up now, so he's going to fight. We're just going to troll him a little bit. Set our dots on him hit him with the leash there we notice another player coming in very low hp quickly take him down with our ultimate into a poke after the gap closer and now we're just going to turn right back onto this templar and continue to keep this guy dotted up he does a good job purging away our dots uh, every now and then but we're just going to continue to dot him up hit him with the leash pulling him into the trap there even more damage over time on him and we're just going to continue to apply pressure to this guy really nice stun off the sword and board go for our ultimate there are the pokes he's so close to dead and he responds with his healing ultimate really great call on his part and uh now his healing ultimate's up so we're just going to re-dot him here notice another nightblade coming in so i quickly leash the night the nightblade into me and i actually really like the leash for solo just because you can kind of pull people off there we see a sork trying to streak through and i'm just going to leash him as well the leash is so trolly because it forces people into a position where they don't know they're going to be and we're just honestly in this fight you see me using the leash almost as a primary stun just to pull these guys around so they can't be in a solid position in this fight there i take an unfortunate time stop i just uh miss miss uh, calculate that roll a little bit and i'm just gonna kite back up into the top of the tower here as i notice more and more ad coming in and here we get to see yet again uh a really shining point of this build we're kind of in our own little safe cubby hole here away from the focus of the fight and we're gonna use the leash to pull someone into our cubby hole we managed to pull this nightblade in and she decides okay we're gonna fight him walks into the trap really awesome we're gonna dot her up really quick here and uh, she's just popping in and out of stealth so I retaliate with my ultimate the ultimate there you see the pulses from the ultimate pulling her out of her cloak so we can finish her off with the poke there really really nice leash gameplay yet again and finally guys for our last clip here this is a, a fairly long clip, and you get to see just a, a whole bunch from this build, but mostly we get to see the mobility and the sustain 
and the durability of this spec. In this fight here, we last a very long time and we got a lot of players after us. So as you can see, Blue is trying to take this yellow keep and we're just trolling here. We're just dotting people up, trying to hit them with the leash, trying to pull them in. We almost get the leash on this guy. He ends up rolling it. Really good job. And he runs off. I want to pull him in on top of my trap. Unfortunately, he does not come. And I keep setting the trap down here because I want to try to get that pull onto the trap. Um, I want to try to leash them in. There we see I try to get a leash on the player that goes for his healing alt and I end up pulling the wrong guy. Not a huge deal because I force the roll out of the other player there and he backs up. So just that little bit of nuance there. I mean, it just means that I won't have that extra pressure. Really like it. And here we see, oh my god, troll mode a thousand. This guy's trying to res. No, get over here. Stop that resin right now. We're just going to keep the pressure on him. Keep dotting him up. He's going to try to go for the res again. We gap close into him now that his immunity's down. Get a nice stun. Sword and board poke with the poison tick there from our poisons as well to bring him down. Such a high proc chance on that poison when we bash cancel as well. And there we see the rest of the blue group is not happy with my shenanigans. And they're just going to try to uh, put some damage. We quickly kite back into the cubby hole here. And I notice some yellow are also coming in the side of the key. I take a super nasty smack from a Templar in the hole in the cubby there. I don't even notice him next to me. So uh, we just do a quick kite around the top and drop back in. We get back up to full health so quickly with the vigor and the health recovery. And now this Templar attacks us again. He goes for the Onslaught. Now Onslaught, I want to note, is the biggest weakness of this build. To have our armor stripped would also take away our health recovery. So we instantly purge after the Onslaught to save us. Uh, that negative effect there. Very important that we purge that right away. And then we just dot up the Templar and continue to fight him. As we take a nasty gank from this Nightblade behind here. He does a great job rolling our incoming stun. And I'm just going to kite back into this uh, into this wall here. Just trying to buy myself some time. This AD player trying to go for the res. We hit him with that nasty stun combo into the poke and bring him down. Really nice kill on that guy. And there we see... Take a little bit of an arrow coming around that corner. I wait to break the CC because I wanted to wait it out. But then I note that the Nightblade's jumping on top of me. So I break the CC, roll past there. And we try to go for a heavy attack. The Nightblade shows his face again, but does not follow me up top here. So, uh... A little bit of a wait here to see if the Nightblade's going to follow. And I actually saw him at the bottom. And there we see he's opening on the yellow that are trying to res here. He quickly brings down a yellow player. And I want to kill this Nightblade because he keeps ganking me out of stealth here. We notice another blue player here. I get the Power of the Light Poison Injection. There we see the ultimate into the pokes. This guy goes into his block and he does a great job responding with his defenses. A little slow though. And he is brought down by the yellow and the friendly red player that comes in as well. And uh, I'm just going to do another kite back here and just try to be conserving my resources as I've been kind of pushing it here. The sustain on this build is fantastic but you know like any build if you do too much combat for too long you will find yourself getting overwhelmed especially when you fight too many opponents. So uh, we're just doing a little bit of kite gameplay here trying to pick a target yet again. I see this yellow player trying to go for the res. We pull one player off the res. I want to go for the second pull but he's just out of range and the yellow are jumping on top of me so I decide okay we're not going to try the second pull here. This guy just got revived. We pull him after the res give him some pokes oh my god we nearly get him an enemy player pulls us we see the player that we had just about killed he runs into the keep we follow him in there almost get him again he's healing himself and we unfortunately are unable to bring him down as the entire yellow group here is going to follow me into the tower so we just do a bit of a kite upstairs make sure that we use those perch and look at our resource oh my god we are in big trouble poking things with those heavy attacks as we can making sure to roll as we see players there these guys come around the corner i go for the back and forth we go one way kite back the other way nice little direction change and there we see the entire group is just kind of waiting at that corridor there as i enter into that load screen and here we're gonna really see that mixed bulk and speed. Um, the speed is so important to staying alive here and of course the bulk too because look at how many attacks we're taking. If we didn't have that armor value that we did on this build, I don't think we'd be able to take all these incoming attacks. And uh, a nice little kite to the bottom here is I want to break this group up a little bit more. As soon as I see a yellow, I start moving again. Don't want to let them see me holding still. If no one's around, we can of course hold still and wait for a little bit of respite. But uh, here we go. We're back up in the tower and we've managed to split the group up just a little little more but the tower is still crawling with yellows and there you see no matter where we go we are constantly getting attacked by these guys really making use of that templar purge though see how often we purge in this fight it's our only magicka skill and it is absolutely 
pivotal to our survival here. There we see the purge yet again, removing so many negative effects, and we have so many on us that it doesn't even remove them all. So if we had not had the purge there, I think we definitely would have just died from so many negative effects. Get a great trap on this guy here. We get the injection, the power of the light into the beast trap. Really nice. Um, but I decide to kite back down as I know some more yellow are going to be coming up. This guy gets us with his uh, with his leash yet again. We've got an enemy player there leashing us, but we're just going to keep kiting around on these guys. Keep moving around. Try to stay mobile and uh, make them follow us. We can have that purge to stay mobile as well, so it's going to come in real handy, and we're just kind of watching the yellow. Here we see, again, we get attacked by the yellow. We're going to kite back up into the top of the tower. Two yellow up top here. We kite back to the bottom. More yellow at the bottom. A nice little safe spot here, and uh, I think we have the opportunity to open on this guy. I go for the injection, the power of the light, and uh, into the ultimate, but I cannot commit offensively to this because the yellow are quickly piling on top of me here, so we're just going to go for another quick kite back up to the top jump to the bottom here and then head into this other uh, tower and of course these yellow are relentless they're going to continue to chase me i see a bunch jump down so i just jump over top of them back into the other tower and set my trap at the staircase here now this fight guys does not go my way as you can guess we're just going to continue to get piled on by these yellow however this is the last fight of the video so i'm going to say my goodbyes now thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed the theme build i actually really love doing theme builds i know maybe sometimes other builds might make more sense but i really like this build because not only did it come together well but it was actually a lot of fun to play it was different from the normal stamplar that i play and different from the meta stamplar as well so it's just another approach at the stamplar spec do injustice to the legendary link if you guys want to catch live gameplay from me you can always catch me on twitch a link to my twitch of course is in the description we feature community top five fights as well as community builds if you guys want to submit your content you can send it in to christopher eso at hotmail.com more information in a video in the description as well for you guys and finally we are sponsored by what the fast they're a vpn for gamers they give me better ping to eso so, and they're free to try for the first 14 days. So if you guys want to give it a shot, go ahead and try it via the referral link in the description below. And there we see they finally take us down. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.